guys and welcome to this January 2022 bullet journal plan with me video. I'm so excited to share this first monthly setup video in the new journal and if you didn't see my previous yearly setup video and that's what you're looking for, I'll leave a link to that one in the description. But now it's time to open up this beautiful new black journal and start setting up this winter layout from the January cover spread. My theme this month is definitely inspired by arctic animals and snowy landscapes. We're gonna use a lot of blue tones in this video, but I also tried to blend in some light pink for a change so that it wouldn't just be a blue winter setup if you know what I mean. So we have this cover page painting to start with today and I decided to paint this on a separate watercolor paper so that we can get the most out of the paints. So we are putting the journal aside for now and instead attach this piece of paper to my painting board with some washi tape. I'm gonna start this picture by lightly sketching out the lower part where I wanted some cute animals gazing at the night sky. And for this arctic inspired theme, I definitely wanted to paint a polar bear and then some small penguins, but I also didn't want to make them super realistic or anything and instead went with this pretty minimal cute cartoon style. One of my personal art goals this year is to start searching my own style a little bit more and maybe venture out of the realistic art style a little bit more as well. So I started with this bear and the most important thing here is to just find the overall shapes for everything since there won't be too many details in the animals themselves. I wanted this bear to sit on the ground while looking up at the sky, so we are drawing the face inside profile. Bears have always been a little bit tricky animal to draw in my opinion, because you really need to rely on the coloring face instead of the initial sketch. I think this goes for many other animals as well, because the different parts of the body are not so much defined by outlines, but instead with the shadows and textures in the fur. But before we're gonna worry about the coloring of this yet, we're actually gonna paint the whole sky part first. And because I didn't want to get any paint to these animals or the whole lower part of the painting, I actually decided to use this masking ink method to secure those areas. So if you've never seen this before, masking ink is this kind of rubbery glue-like ink that you can use in watercolor paintings to leave white areas in some otherwise tricky spots. I wanted to be able to blend the colors in the sky smoothly all the way down to the bottom of the painting and now this masking ink here will prevent any of that color getting into this area we are covering. So now we are ready to start working on the sky and we are starting this with a wet on wet technique that's perfect for creating smoothly blended areas. So I wet the whole sky area with water using this fairly big brush and then started to add these blue tones all across the sky that will now blend nicely to the wet surface. I wanted there to be a slightly lighter area here in the middle and I also wanted to add a little bit of color to this painting instead of just leaving it all blue. So I tried adding a little bit of this light pink here in the middle. First I was thinking about creating more of a northern lights type of effect but I just didn't want to use green in this monthly setup so I decided to just go with this soft pink color hue here instead, then we just add something more interesting to this painting. This guy took me three layers in total. You could probably get away with two if you add color with a little bit heavier hand, but especially with the first layers, I wanted to make sure that the middle point here stays much lighter than the rest. So I actually just tapped out some of the extra color with a tissue paper if I thought it looked a little bit too dark. I tried to focus most of the darkness to the outer edges of the painting, but in general the sky doesn't need to look super smooth either, so I tried to add some darker taps of color to other parts of the painting as well to create some variation. 
If you decide to work with multiple layers, it's important to let the first layers dry completely because otherwise you might disrupt some of the still drying areas and create some blooming effect. So let everything fully dry and then add a light layer of clear water as you did in the beginning and after that you are free to add more color to any areas you want to intensify or smooth out. I don't know if I did the best job here with this guy. In my mind, the color stripe here in the middle was a little bit more defined, but that sometimes happens with watercolors and I thought it was still good enough. But the next step here is to add the stars and I always use the same method for this. So all you need is some type of white paint, like white gouache or acrylic paint. Then dip a small brush in the paint, then in water and then you can just tap the brush with something else like another brush over the painting. This will cause the white paint to create these small white splashes all across the surface that quite nicely represents the stars on a night nice sky. I usually also add some finishing touches by hand. So here I especially wanted some more stars in the center area. But now that the sky is done, it's time to remove the masking ink and reveal these clean edges we now have for the animal part. So I started painting the polar bear first and started with some super light colors as you can see here. It's always a little bit tricky to paint something that's supposed to be white because you still need to add some shadows while keeping the overall look light if that makes any sense. I tried to make some cool grey tones here by adding a little bit of those same blue and purple tones we used in the sky. And then she started to define some of the shadow areas here and make some dimensions to this bear. Adding all the darkest details like the eyes and the nose pretty early on is usually quite helpful in my opinion because it kind of gives you a reference point of how dark all the shadow areas should be. Then I did the same thing here with the small penguins and just slowly kept intensifying the shadows until I thought everything stood out enough. Then the last step for this painting was to add some color also to the crown part and I kind of went for this rocky snowy hill here. Again sketching everything out with a pencil first makes a world of a difference in my opinion and you can also try to find some picture references to make your life easier with details like this. But that's finally it for the cover painting. I know we've been here for a while, but now I just removed the washi tapes and fixed this one uneven edge here with a white pen and then cut the edges a little bit and eventually attached the painting to my journal. I think double-sided tape is usually the most secure way to attach anything. So that's usually the method I choose, especially for bigger paintings like this. But then we're moving on to the right side of the page and here I just wanted to add a big January title and also write out a small monthly calendar under it. To this day, I still haven't learned actual calligraphy lettering, so I usually just fake it by making the downstrokes of the letters thicker with the same pen if I want to create a little bit of that effect to the font. Then I used some Archer and Olive Acrylocraft pens here for the color accents and we're actually going to use these pens quite a lot later on in the video as well. But the title page finally finishes up the whole monthly cover spread and as always, especially for any new viewers who might be interested, I do make digital polished versions of these themes that I sell on my online shop and if you'd be interested in some extra monthly content on top of the digital themes, there's also an option for that on my Patreon. Everyone who joins the Patreon will also now get the newest yearly setup in a digital form that I added there as a small bonus this month, so links to all of that are in the description. 
But I think that's enough advertising for this video. And now let's finally move on in this setup. And next we have the monthly calendar spread that will just have a bigger calendar for the whole month. We're actually not quite done with painting yet. I feel like this January setup is a little bit painting heavy in the beginning and then the rest of this theme will focus more on the actual planning content and have some much easier spreads as well. So I hope there's a little bit something for everyone. But anyway, I started here by covering the center part with some washi tape again so that we can now freely paint the outsides of the page without worrying about getting the paint to the calendar area. And this time, instead of watercolors, we are using gouache paints and we're also painting directly onto the journal. I find that gouache paints are usually a better option for this is they require a little bit less water and blending which also keeps the pages looking prettier in the end. So I had this other night sky illustration in mind here with this moon floating in the water. But I started this one with the darker sky part first. So we are mixing this dark blue shade from the paints. And as you can see, I added a hair of black to these blue tones to get a slightly grayish tone to this color. Doing this is usually pretty messy and I like to use some sort of paper underneath to protect the rest of my notebook. And then with gouache paints, to get this nice consistency, which is still opaque, but also easy to blend, I mix a little bit of water with the paint mixture. But otherwise, I think this painting is pretty straightforward. So I just covered the whole top part with this color and only left out the moon shape here in the corner. Then after all this paint has dried, we're using the same method to add some white stars to the sky part. So again, tipping the small brush to the white paint and splashing that all across the spread. Then we'll mix a slightly lighter blue tone for the lower part, which will be the water surface. And here, after the initial background color, I also added some different color variations here, kind of to mimic the water surface. But now it's time to jump to these corner details here. And I started by adding some light gray shadows to the moon and also fixed the crooked outlines a little bit as well. I used gouache paints here as well, but just mixed a little bit more water to them, which creates a much more watercolor-like finish. I also decided to add some extra sparkles around the moon, but then I jumped to the best part, which was painting these three little penguins here. I sketched this out with a pencil again because this type of cutesy style is very foreign to me. But eventually I really liked how straightforward these were to paint and how cute this illustration here ended up. I think eventually the painting edges were a little bit overpowering on this page. So I tried to balance things out by adding this large white January title at the top of the calendar. I think the white letters looked so pretty against this dark blue background. I don't know why, but this color combination reminded me of some old school Disney movies, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> anyway, now we finally only have the calendar to set up on this page and I decided to keep it pretty minimal. Again, I used this pink color to add some contrast to all the blues and then just wrote all the January dates here. And yes, if you noticed, I totally left out the last day of January because a one Monday was not worth the space it would have taken from the painting. But that's finally it for this monthly calendar painting page. And now let's finally move on to some more functional monthly planning stuff. 
January we'll start the first quarter of this year so on this next spread we'll have some quarterly planning stuff and also just productivity related things just for January. I wanted to have a little bit more space here so I decided to create a Dutch door layout and after writing this big planning title I decided to add these dark blue edges to the page that will also work as a border for the Dutch door area. But then the first thing I decided to add here is this open space to write about the first quarter goals. I always like to leave spaces like this in my bullet journal where I can write about the goals in almost a brain dump type of way. And I feel like it just helps to get the thoughts flowing. I think a three month period is such a good time frame to tackle some goals. So I usually look back to the yearly goals in this point and try to see what I could focus on in the next few months. I know many of you can probably relate to this, but one month usually passes much faster than you thought. So that's why I think the three month period is often much more realistic for some bigger goals. But then I added this habit section here. This won't be a habit tracker or anything, but just more a list of some habit ideas that you'd like to try to start in January. Then this right page will just be for this bigger and more detailed goals tracker. So I'll try to choose three different things I'll focus on in the first quarter of this year. And I always try to make things really practical, especially about the goals. So these small boxes here are for some smaller action steps related to the bigger goal. Then before we move on to the next flip door page, I decided to add this light gray grid thing here with a brush pen that added a small decoration element to this otherwise pretty plain spread. It took more time than I'm willing to admit to draw all these lines with a ruler, but I think the effect was worth it in the end. But then let's flip ourselves over to the second planning spread and here I wanted to start with this mini mountain landscape painting that's probably one of the fastest painting I've done in my journal though it kind of looks like you put much more effort than you actually did. So I cut out this small piece of watercolor paper and sketched out some quick mountain shapes here with a pencil. This time I didn't bother with the masking ink, so I just tried to be careful to work around the white mountains while adding some blue tones to this sky. I decided to add some light pink here again so that everything would go together with the rest of the theme and then also added some color to the lower part of the painting that will be some sort of lake. I tried to create these reflections here by leaving these white spaces for the mountains and none of this needs to be super detailed or anything. I think the messy outcome actually quite suited this picture for some reason. But then I started to add some quick shadowing to the mountains and it's usually the best idea to keep the shapes pretty sharp so it will represent the rocky appearance of a mountain. And again, there's no right or wrong way to do this, so just add some shadows to everywhere you feel like it. Then I also decided to add some mini trees here and darken some of the deepest shadows even further. But after that, all you need to do is let the picture dry and your cute mini painting is done. I rounded the corners to match this with the rest of the boxes and then just glued this to the page. But under the painting, we're continuing with the January planning stuff. Technically, I think the previous page will already have some January goals and plans as well. So I kept this one pretty simple. I just left myself this small place to choose the top priority for the month. That's something that at least needs to happen. And then the 15th checking is just a space I often use in my journals to visit these planning pages in the middle point of the month and check if I'm still on track with what I planned. 
but then the last page will be a combined sleep and productivity tracker that I separated in these two boxes. I think this might be a little bit more difficult one to explain, but it will basically be this graph where I'll mark the amount of hours I slept every night. So those could be marked with a small dot, for example. And then the smiley faces are for tracking the daily productivity. So maybe here I'll use some kind of bar to tell these two things apart. I actually haven't set up anything quite as high maintenance in a while in my journal, but I thought maybe I'll have some extra energy and motivation to track this type of stuff in January. And I think many of you might find something like this useful as well. The first box here is for the first half of the month and the second box is the exact same thing for the second half. But that's all for this pretty detailed monthly planning section. I'm really looking forward to diving into all of this. But now it's time for us to move on again. And next we're setting up the first weekly layout of January. I started this page by painting the top and bottom edges of these pages with gouache paints again. You could actually use the same Archer and Olive pens for this if you own them. It just takes quite a long time to color an area this size, so gouache paints felt like a better option. Anyway, I know this is such a simple decoration idea, but it completely changes the look of the pages in my opinion. And I always think it's fun to decorate the journal, which is some simple color combinations as well. So not all the pages need to have some crazy painting or anything like that. But anyway, I actually used this one spread to set up the first two weeks of January. And that's just because I'm so lazy to set up the weekly pages throughout the month that having two in one sounds pretty good to me. So after the quick title here, I started by drawing these round boxes here again, which will be for the daily to-do lists. I haven't done a daily to-do list type of weekly setup in a while. I've kind of been using the weekly task list type of approach, but I thought I would change things up and revisit this old system as well. But then I used the top part of these spreads first to do a small habit tracker. I like to use these small symbols for the different habits just to save some space. And whenever I have a habit tracker in my journals, I usually list stuff like doing yoga or reading, writing, going to bed at a certain time and just stuff like that. Then I did this small must do list and again it will just help me to prioritize the tasks I need to do in these two weeks. And then this left side here will just be for a simple diary that I can use to write anything that's on my mind. I personally like to keep the weekly pages pretty simple because these are usually the pages I use the most so they usually still end up looking pretty full. But now we're moving on to the last spread of this whole monthly setup. So I'll skip one page that I will use for the last two weeks of January and then we can move on to the monthly reflection page. I always like to set up pages like this in my journal where I just reflect on the whole month. I usually fill these pages in the last few days of the month and they've just become a fun page to write some memories and also help me to collect my thoughts about everything that's going on in my life. I was planning on doing some type of bigger drawing here as well, but I unfortunately didn't have time to do that this month. So instead, I decided to tie this page to the crit effect thing we did on the planning page. So I drew these big boxes in the middle and then used the crit effect on the outlines of the pages. But then let's start setting up the actual content of these pages. So this first one will just be for some January favorites. So here I'll just write some random categories that I can use to list some of my favorite things in January. I feel like these are always the most interesting pages to look back to. 
I left a little bit more room for my January playlist because I usually cannot decide only one song to list on these pages. But then let's move on to the left side and this will be more for the reflection questions. I separated this space for these two questions and the first question will be just what's on my mind. This is also a very open question that lets you write about whatever is on the top of your mind in that moment. And then on the bottom I have this second space to just write about things I'm grateful for. I think being grateful about the stuff you have is such an important thing and just thinking about that kind of stuff always puts you in a better mood. So that's why I try to have a section like this in almost every monthly theme. But then the last thing on this spread is something I've done in the past. So I kind of brought back this small scale thing which will just have five different categories that I can use to review the whole past month. But that finally finishes up this January monthly layout. I really hope this setup gave you some new ideas. And if you're newer to bullet journaling and you feel like I went through something too fast, you can leave all those questions in the comment section and I'll do my very best to answer them. Also, if this was your first time here on the channel and you'd like to stay tuned for more journaling and painting stuff in the future, please consider subscribing. It's always highly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are and see you in my next one. Bye bye.